What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Havoc OS for this device. In the Android version section, we have the Android version as Android 10 of course. On the top we get the Havoc OS logo, the Havoc OS version shows as 3.6 and then we have the latest security patch as June 5th 2020. Here is the build date, you can see this is the 14th June 2020 build. The stock kernel here is Immensity kernel and here we have the build number. I have been using this ROM for about 3 to 4 days now and I faced two problems so far. So the first thing which I have been noticing is from this display like when the screen is locked and I have been using the screen of FOD. Now from here if I try to unlock as you can see it's not unlocking right now so if I double tap like this as you can see the screen is really dim. I did not put the phone to lock like when it was this dim and if you are noticing the screen's refresh rate over here on the lock screen is too low. So right now if I tap the fingerprint scanner it won't work. I have to double tap again then double tap to wake again and now if I try to unlock and as you can see the fingerprint scanner did work. So this is one bug that I have faced. Now the next one a lot of you guys have been sharing with me that you guys are facing some problems like some YouTube flickering. Let me show you that. So here as you can see I'm playing this video of mine and here if I try to change the resolution as you can see I can set to 480p it does not flicker but if I tap over here and as you can see if you tap on this pill bar and between this resolution it will flicker for once and I think this is a stock launcher related thing not a ROMs bug or something I think this is a stock launcher related thing because if you swipe up like this it goes to the home screen and yes I think still it is a like this resolution kind of thing as you can see if I tap over here on the bottom it does happen sometimes as you can see it happened again it's weird sometimes it does happen sometimes it doesn't so as you can see it's dim again so yeah this is happening with me too so just in case if you guys are wondering yes this bug is there now to start talking about this ROM everything is super smooth here and all the like other things like the whole UI stays smooth except for that lock screen kind of thing let me reduce the brightness just a little bit and talking about flashing this ROM there are two variants one of them includes the gapps one of them does not so I flash the included gapps version I'm on the latest MIUI 12.0.09 vendor and this is an Indian device so Rafael in in global 12.0.0.09 I guess the firmware I flashed so with that firmware I flashed the ROM file and fcrypt disabler and rebooted and I came from a different custom ROM so I wiped cache Dalvik system data and I flashed the ROM and the fcrypt disabler I did not flash the firmware because I was already on that firmware if you are not on the latest 12.009 firmware then you need to flash it again and if you're coming from UI you need to format storage now to begin with the stock camera here is ANX camera as you can see and everything is working fine like the 0.6x lens or the 2x telephoto lens everything does work and the front camera let me show you as you can see the front camera works fine no issues with this even portrait mode and stuff should be working fine with the front camera and the rear camera both so you should not worry in the video section we of course have the like 1080p 60fps then 4k 60fps option as you are noticing and this also has the vlog mode over here and even in slow mo there is the 960fps slow mo video kind of shooting option I have also installed the Google Camera 7. This has been working fine too. This is the latest Yonix version 1.9, Google Camera version 7.3, I guess. So yeah, this has been working fine with all the lenses and even with night sight, this Google Camera has been working fine. I'll link it on the card if you want this. Now talking about the other things like DRM info and stuff, as you can see, the DRM info stays level one here. So you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p, so you should not worry. And it passes the safety net test, so that means you can use Google Pay or any other banking apps on this ROM and you do not need to flash Magisk or use Magisk Hide just for the banking apps. Now let's just talk about the stock launcher. Here is how it looks like. Let me show you which launcher is this if I click over here. This is the shady launcher as you are noticing 
and in the settings we have some interesting features here is the about section of this launcher then in the gestures we do have this double tap to sleep option so you can double tap anywhere on the home screen and that will make the phone sleep and then we have the icons kind of customization and also we have this grid kind of settings and inside app drawer this app prediction or the app suggestion you can disable so that I like and I have disabled this app prediction option and in the home screen we have these many customizations you can enable or disable as however you like. Now on the stock launcher to the left we have this Google's discover page and swiping up gets you to the app drawer swiping down gets you to the quick settings panel and here we have the widgets and widgets are working fine here and you can double tap anywhere on the home screen and that will make the phone sleep so that's cool and as you can see here is the fingerprint scanner speed let me show you again i'm using the screen of fod so this is why there is no clock on this lock screen display or always on display sometimes as you can see right now it doesn't work i have to double tap to lock and then double tap to wake and as you can see right now it worked again the fingerprint scanner speed is really good there is no problem of course when it works and here is how the quick toggles panel looks like and as you can see there are some options like this fps counter and stuff if you want this as you can see on the top left it shows the fps counter so that's cool and you can edit and add a bunch of more toggles and there are a plethora of options as you are noticing i do not have any issues with these options there are plenty of quick toggles you can add from here and in terms of the screen recorder, let me show you this is how it looks like. You can set the bitrate from here. You can change the audio source to internal or the microphone. And then the show touches option is there. But there is an option to change the resolution of the screen recording. So that's how it is. Now in the system panel, there is no system or software updater. You have to update manually whenever you receive an update. You got to keep that in mind. Now here we have the camera LED kind of disabling option and the front camera sounds are there they should work fine but I usually disable it I haven't showed face unlock so yes this ROM does have face unlock let me set it up and the setup is done I'll click done now let's just double tap over here to lock the device and double tap to wake now if I swipe up and as you can see the face unlock started working let's try again I have to swipe up to use the face unlock so you need to keep that in mind once you double tap on the lock screen it does not unlock the device or pop out the camera automatically you have to swipe up and then it will detect your face now let me show you the sound settings here we have the audio direct and you can choose it to youth edition or something and the sound output via the headphone jack and bluetooth as well is super good here i have no issues with the sound output in this rom and you can also change this to hi-fi audio if you have a really good headphone you can use this preset let me go back we have this kind of touch vibration screenshot sound etc disabling option then if you scroll we have the live caption mode if you want that and then we have this vibration and haptic feedback kind of customization this is how the volume panel looks like as you can see you can control the media call etc volume when you are expanded and you can also control the ringtone vibration pattern from here in the display settings let me show you here we have the brightness level adaptive or auto brightness nightlight is there and you can turn it on or schedule it as you like dark theme is there too inside styles and wallpapers let me show you that the accent colors are present here but you have to customize a theme by tapping on that custom theme then you just tap next and from here you choose your accent color there are plenty of options but i would have liked a different kind of theme section for these accent colors but yeah it is good too that we have these kind of red blue etc accent colors here you can scroll through them and you can choose any accent color as you like from here then in terms of the lock screen clock these are the options as you can see plethora of clock options are there so yeah and in the wallpaper section we have these on device wallpaper this is the default wallpaper i have been using and if you scroll down you get some live wallpapers too as you can see these live wallpapers you can use them if you want as you can see they should work fine there are pretty much nine live wallpapers here and we have the colors as boosted by default then display size etc is there inside lock screen display we have this skip lock screen option then always on display is there as you can see this one and double tap to wake is there too anti flicker or dc dimming mode is there too now in terms of battery settings this is how it looks like and this is cool that i have set the battery icon on the status bar to circle and this battery icon changed to circle too and whenever i go into the battery settings this does this kind of animation 
pretty cool looking and you can scroll down and get the battery temperature then screen on time is there and i would say you can get about six to seven hours of screen on time on this rom battery life is not too good but yeah it's decent enough that you can daily drive a whole working day and 18 watt fast charging does work fine too not a problem battery saver and stuff is there then adaptive battery smart charging etc things are there thermal profile per app settings are there and you can check the full battery usage from here of course now talking about the customizations everything inside this configuration center and you get a lot of customizations here first i will show you the about section you can donate to the developers if you want from here let me go back and inside status bar we have this clock customization you can customize the status bar clock like this from here as you can see i have set the like small ampm style and it appeared you can change the like font size and stuff if you want to i think from here then logo option is there and brightness control by sliding a finger on the status bar is there and it this feature does work super fine no issues then we have the double tap to sleep on the status bar that works fine this network speed indicator is there you can customize it if you want to i use a different app for this that works fine too and inside icon style we have the portrait circle dotted circle circle field text and hidden then we have the battery percentage showing up option next to the icon or inside the icon then battery bar kind of settings is there then status bar icons are there headset bluetooth etc icons you can get from here then hd 4g icon etc is there let me go back and inside quick settings panel we have the quick pull down choosing option from right or left then smart pull down option is there too battery estimates is there background blur etc and as you can see whenever you are pulling the quick setting panel down this background becomes blurry and you can also customize this blur intensity from here then we have the header image you can set a particular image on the header and column and row number for the quick settings panel customization is here and settings icon user switcher icon and stuff is there then inside lock screen we have the double tap to sleep on the lock screen media artwork and stuff is there pocket detection is there there is the screen of fod option that's what i have been using then we have the show icon and recognizing animation but you cannot really change the recognizing animation that's one thing that i have been noticing or you cannot even change the figment scanner kind of icons so yeah that's how it is and authentication vibration and stuff is there error vibration is there but there is no always unlock with fingerprint scanner but there is the charging info and stuff if you want it to show in the lock screen and by the way this pocket detection does work as you are noticing it shows this kind of notification if it's covered as you can see so if i move it as you can see it disappears and it reappears again so yeah the pocket detection should work fine and inside the ambient display we have the battery level always on and stuff always on display brightness you can change it then inside buttons we have the navigation bar and inside the system navigation gestures we have this kind of navigation gesture settings and i have increased this length of this pill bar and that works fine two or three button navigation is there too and power menu customization is there there is the advanced reboot let me show you if i tap like this as you can see if i tap here i can directly reboot to recovery or fast boot from these settings and you can disable the power menu in the lock screen too from here then we have the screen of power button torch and long press for power button toggle torch is working fine swap volume keys is there wake up device and stuff is there and then you can set the like swipe action like i have set the left swipe to screenshot so right now if i swipe like this and hold it and as you can see it took a screenshot this is a scrolling kind of screenshot by the way also the three finger screenshot gesture is there i'll show that to you so what just happened is like it closes some apps in the memory so i would say the memory management is not too good here inside gestures we have this swipe to screenshot so again this kind of screenshot is there this is the oxygen kind of screenshot taking option let me go back and inside notification we have the charging led notification led blink flashlight for incoming call is there then call waiting option is there edge lighting option is there too but i am not really sure if it actually works i have never seen it working head sub notifications and stuff is there force close notification is there noisy notification option is there too then inside screen we have the use framework values and you can like customize the corner padding and stuff if you want that then let me go back we have the animations this is the whole ui animation you can change this quick setting toggle animation too from here let me go back to misc here we have the gaming mode the screenshot type changing option then wake up device i have disabled that and charging animation is there whenever you are plugging in the device it gives you a pixel kind of animation and the wi-fi calling option is there too but i am not using it right now but yes you can use the wi-fi calling if you want 
and here is how the stock dialer looks like it does not have the call recording option but it does have the video calling option and normal volte calling and stuff should be working fine here now let me just open some of the apps and show you guys the app open up speeds and the ram management here let's open facebook twitter play store youtube instagram now let's open spotify now let's open okay i opened play store let me open amazon flipkart let's open this drm info too now let me open all the apps from memory again this chrome file explorer facebook twitter play store youtube instagram drm info and amazon and flipkart all are in memory right now but as you are noticing sometimes the wallpaper goes black for a couple milliseconds and that is really weird but i have seen sometimes the app like reloads or something whenever i am into an app it just reloads like suddenly so i'm not really sure how good the ram management will be but yeah right now as you are noticing even though this is a 6gb ram variant the apps are still in memory all the apps are still in memory so you should not worry about memory management over here on this rom everything seems to be pretty smooth and all the apps are in memory and in terms of gaming and stuff if you are willing to game a lot i would say you can play games on the highest settings possible like call of duty or something you can play with anti aliasing and stuff and with pubg you can play with the hdr and extreme settings i guess and here is the end to end geekbench score for this rom so let me know in the comments what do you guys think about this have a quest latest build on the Redmi K20 Pro i think this is a pretty good option thank you so much for watching this video guys give it a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel down there if you have not yet this is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today i'll catch you guys in the next one bye now